Tony Khan answered questions from the media yesterday. And uh, let's go through some of these from the front page of WrestlingObserver.com. <laughs> I, I think about Tony Khan, uh, uh, you know, these press conferences, he's really good at saying nothing. You ever notice that? <laughs> With a lot of words. So the first question was about the Elite and CM Punk being on the same card. And his response was, It's great to have so many superstars on Forbidden Door. I'm really excited about having Punk and the Elite on the show. However, he never spoke about them being in the same building at the same time. Only in America. That man is a pro. He has been through the ringer with NFL teams and plenty of other situations. And yes, we have seen him have very poor times out there dealing with employees and dealing with things. But when it comes to these things, yeah, you get a lot of this and that's what you're going to get. He was asked about the locker room dynamic regarding Punk being back. He said, so far, it has been a positive experience at the last two shows in Chicago. And he hyped up Punk's upcoming matches this weekend. That's what he said. Khan said everybody was really excited about the television ratings for Collision. Well, the first week was, was very good. Bleacher Report was asked about the booking of Jungle Boy and Sonata. Khan said Jungle Boy was his first pick for the match. Come he said on, the whole company me. believes in him, and he has continued to develop over the years. Well, Asked where Brian Danielson and Okada ranks as far as matches he's excited to book. He said it was ranking near the top in terms of anticipation as a promoter or a fan. Also happy with how they've been building the match in recent weeks. Asked about the Owen Hart Cup tournament and the lack of Canadians participating. Khan said he wanted to give the strongest field possible. Feels they did that. And there will be future Owen Hart tournaments in Canada. And there will be chances for Canadian wrestlers to get involved. That's about CM Punk and Kenta not taking place. Khan responded, Punk and Kojima is the match he wants to see. And that this Sunday show has more stars on it than any show he has ever produced. More stars than in the sky, baby. As for anyone else who Punk was rumored to wrestle, he said he can't comment on that. Asked about Stardom no telling you a Stardom pay-per-view on the same day. He hopes to work with Stardom in the future. He has built stronger connections with New Japan's Ghetto and Takami Obari through organizing the show. Continue to talk about the injury problems the show suffered from last year. He was asked about the report that his family was interested in purchasing Bellator. He said he was surprised to see that and does not know what it's about. They've not had any conversations about purchasing Bellator. He was asked about the Elite BCC feud. Talked about many different stories taking place within the match. Moxley, Kingston, Takeshi, and the Elite, etc. Was asked about women working in creative. He mentioned Madison Rain and Sarah Stock as those who contribute and praise their work. He gets a perspective of top wrestlers as well. Asked about opening the Forbidden Door with other companies. He said he'd like to work with uh, CMLL and AAA. Our own Dave Meltzer had said here, asked about one Bill Phil. And if it was a reference to a new and possibly lucrative television deal with WBD. Tony Khan said that Punk's comment about Zaslav was a throwback to when wrestlers on TNT would refer to Ted Turner on television. He said the company is continually growing and trying to reach the number that Punk referenced. Which means they didn't uh, sign a billion dollar deal. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper, Vivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. And you say I annoy you. You know, I'm looking at this chat right now, and I don't know, Brian, I think you bring this all on yourself. I didn't bring any of this up. I'm reading a transcript here. Oh, yeah? About what? He was asked about uh, Goldberg being involved with AEW. He said he had nice conversations with Bill. But he does not see him as a good fit for Sting and Darby Allen's partner on Sunday. This now, a lot of people too. would look at that and go, well, for sure he's going to be the partner then. But, you know, normally when, when Tony says something is not going to happen, he, he's not doing that to swerve people. He's, he's doing that because he doesn't want people expecting something that he's not going to give them. We were asked I know, about. I look, I know Tony's rich and all that, and he could spend as much money as he wants and the family and all that, but like. Wouldn't you, if you're spending that much money on Goldberg, don't you want to kind of build that up? Don't you want well, to actually I mean, have some... Yeah, the idea is they build it up on, on Saturday night. 
Mm. I mean, here's the thing. It's very clear if you watch the way that, that Tony Khan books that he believes no one is buying a pay-per-view until the day of the show, okay? This is not the 90s where you call your cable company a week in advance and you place your order and all that kind of stuff. He doesn't think anyone's buying the show until the day of the show, which 99.99% of the people are not buying the show until the day of the show. Yeah. So at the end of the day, as long as they know everything they need to know on the day of the show, it's fine. He's done that oh. show after show after show after show. And if he thinks, and by the way, I don't think he thinks this, if he thinks that Goldberg is is the guy that's going to team with them and that as, as long as he announces it on Saturday night before the show and it's a big angle and people go crazy, that's all he needs, then that's what he's going to do. But I don't think it is going to be Goldberg. And look, I'm sure a lot of the data says impulse and things like that with shorter attention spans and things like that. You get it out. I mean, I guess that's kind of what WWE seems to be doing with their premium live events in that we used to have a schedule for the year, at least of the dates of where everything was, if not all of the cities that they were going to be in. And now they do all the branding, where the city announcement's going to be, the ticket sales, all that sort of stuff. They've now shrunk in that whole time frame down a lot, too. So obviously there's something to that when it comes to really all of this stuff. We asked about uh, Punk having an ownership stake in AW. Khan said that is not the case. But Punk wants the company to do well. He was using a Colloquialism. Is that how you say it? Whatever. I don't like that word. It's too oh, big for me. He stop. said he's just, quote, trying to run a business. He was asked about the viewership for Collision, what WBD would consider a success. He responded the number they got was considered very successful. He said he doesn't know the exact number that is projected week to week going forward, however. And then was asked about Stat Lantern Punk coming back from injuries. He said they have hit the ground running, and it is good for returning wrestlers to get the ring rust out early. Can I ask you a silly question? I don't think you know. Oh, I love silly questions. Does. Yes. Is the writer's strike fixed? Is that over or is it still ongoing? Is it still No, I thought you meant happen? fixed like is it a work? <laughs> no, but I mean, is it has that been resolved yet? Because what will be really interesting. It again, is unresolved. With all, these, with all it is these unresolved properties. Could we see Monday Night Raw end up on NBC on a Monday night? Because who knows? Could we see TBS and TNT decide to move Collision or rerun it at some point during the week if that happens? Could we see it end up on True TV? I mean, it'll be interesting to see what happens because that's the one thing you have. You have sports, you have professional wrestling, and then you have whatever cheaply produced game shows and reality shows that you can get that don't involve writers and Again, I don't know what production times are on all of these sorts of things, but as time moves on here, you're going to run out of time to finish things, and it's going to be really interesting. So, My gut feeling is that there is enough stuff to air that they will not have to worry about that in the short term. But if we're talking like, you know, in two years, it still has not been resolved. Then, yeah, oh, of course you yeah. can see something like that. Well, on, but on, you know uh, how people get weird and desperate in these, you know, again, some of these companies and decision makers where it's like, okay, we're going to shift all these game shows and you have this on here. I mean, that's the one thing ABC has going for it is the fact that ESPN, I mean, look at the amount of programming. And they are the ones who, anytime you see sports on any single property, that's being executive produced through ESPN. So, again, it's just it's going to be really interesting because, again, even a long, even a, one that pushes into January, like pushes into half the season, could ter start turning things upside this down. plaque. I'm still yeah. waiting for this stupid plaque. Yeah, Bischoff. Paul and Bischoff or who? What in God's name is going on? Uh oh. Who let you in here? Everybody's favorite. Come over here. You can't even be seen. What? Oh my God. Oh! Happy days here for Brian Alvarez. There it is. Presented oh, at F4W that. Online for passing 100,000 subscribers. Uh huh. I want to give Oreo a hug. Come here, you big fat whale. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to everybody hey. out there. Uh oh. Hey. Uh, what are you doing? Brian? Oreo? Hey, oh. I'm taking over the show! Oh no. Dumb! Oreo. Hit that music, brother! Ah, oh, the hell with it. You know what? It's Monday. It's dance party. No, man! Hey, no! Hey. I love you guys! I love you! Oh. 
when can you have this much fun on a Monday on Wrestling Observer Live? I think we may have started something new here. I hate that whale! If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.